is my um, my foster kitten. She's gonna go. So she's gonna go and get a, her first vaccination tomorrow. Aren't you, sweetie? Yeah. So she, well, she loves cuddles like this, and she can just sleep like this. Okay. my channel. So you've probably decided that you're going to do your graduate studies full time and perhaps you've got a stipend or perhaps you're just like me, um, you're self-funding your um, education. So is 1,000 Singapore dollars or about 550 pounds, is it enough to sustain you for a month? Stay tuned and find out. Right, so before you get to budgeting, there are three things that you really need to pay attention to. First, identifying your income streams. Second, doing a balance sheet. And the third, and most importantly, stick to it. Okay, so where do you start doing your balance sheet? So if you have um, the current Windows 10 and are using Microsoft Office for home or for student, then you should have um, these options when you open Excel. So when you open a new Excel page, it prompts you to choose one of these. Let's just go straight to budgets. So as you can see, there is a lot of templates here already. And so you can choose what you like. Um, I had initially used this one. Then I found that it was a bit too complicated. So nowadays, I just use this, which is very simple and you know easy to use. Basically, you just put in your income and then put in your expenses, and it tells you how much you have left, and also tells you you know what percentage of your income that you've been using. So let's see. So here is probably a sample of what uh, my monthly budget could look like if I was still working. So you see, it tells you your income, expenses, and your balance. Well, 1,004 is actually not too bad uh, for savings. Right, so under your income, you can actually put the different streams of income. And then after that, uh, under your expenses, um, these are mostly your mandatory expenses. So it is very important to ensure that you put all your mandatory expenses. So these are the ones that are recurrent and are of a fixed amount. And then at the bottom, well, you can also create different tabs or, you know, simply add depending on how structured you are. So, for example, today I took a taxi, send the cats to the vet. So that's about $40, right? And you will see that this is automatically reflected here. And the balance is also updated. Now, the thing about doing a balance sheet is that you have to be really disciplined so, you know, throughout the month, you need to keep on adding new expenses that you didn't foresee. And then um, to ensure that your balance does not dip to zero or negative. So we'll see how well or how badly I've done over the last few months. So as you can see, I did pretty badly on my first month. But for the second and third month, it was quite decent. So um, for the third month, I exceeded by $10, but because there was a savings on the second month, um, it's actually okay. Now, also, as you've noticed, the income, uh, the income that I have per month is actually more than $1,000. Well, that's definitely cheating, isn't it? Well, here's the truth, right? $1,000 is really difficult. So you have to go and work part-time to get that extra income. For me, um, I actually give a personal one-on-one -on -one tuition and um, I charge it about $50 per hour. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, you're thinking it's very steep, but well, this is actually the market rate um, because I teach for um, the Cambridge O-level history and social studies exams. And that is sort of like the market rate, rate uh, for graduate students. However, this money that I've got uh, from tuition teaching tuition, I don't actually spend everything. I put some of it into my uh, monthly expenditure and I save the rest. And you're wondering, why, why are you saving? Aren't you going to use it anyway, right? 
So yeah, so I'm actually saving it because I will be in the UK um, towards the end of the year in December and January. And I will show you uh, a comparison of the expenditure in Singapore and in the UK. A lot of people tell me that the UK is very expensive and having been there um, quite a lot of times, I do agree. But I'm sure that we'll find ways to um, budget when we get there. So, you've now sorted out all your additional income stream. Now let's take a look at the more important part. So here are four tips to make that dollar stretch. The first thing that I do is to budget for $10 a day for food in school. Okay, so that would be about $300 um, of your disposable amount. That's nearly half of it. Um, I'll do another video for you to show um, what I spend on on a day-to-day -day basis in school and also what I buy at the supermarket uh, for groceries. But in general, $10 can be spent um, as follows. One coffee plus dinner plus snack. Lunch plus dinner plus snack. Or groceries. So I often use the budget for Wednesday, Thursday and Sunday to pay for my groceries for the week. So that's about $30 or so. So um, this amount will cover uh, the combination, um, will cover the meals that are not covered by the combination uh, that I showed earlier. But the key is that on these days, on these three days, you, you must not spend anything. I know it's really, really hard. So um, this brings me to my second part, taking the public transport. So I take the public transport as much as possible. Um, if you really want to save, uh, you should go and get the um, monthly concession pass, which some of my friends do. That's about 120 a month. So the 120 is, um, well, it gives you unlimited rides on the buses and on the MRTs. But I don't do that um, because my um, daily commute to school is about 320. And if you think about it, 120 means you need to spend at least $4 or more a day. And since I don't, I just budget for $25 a week or about $100 a month. And so this brings me to the earlier point where, you know, you need to ensure that you don't spend unnecessarily. And how I do this is to ensure that I stay at home on Thursdays and on Sundays. Um, and I don't have classes or anything on those days, so um, it, it helps me to save as well. However, do always put aside some money for emergencies. So for this month, um, and for every month, I budget about $40 for taxis. And um, this is for um, instances where you miss last bus, maybe you went for supper with your friends. Or, um, well, for this month, I actually have to bring uh, my two kittens, one for vaccination and one for sterilization um, tomorrow. So um, I need a taxi to bring both of them because obviously I can't walk um, to the clinic. Now for the third point, coffee. Now, you know, living in this very um, hipster culture, having coffee is, is so common, right? Um, so the trick is to limit yourself to about two to three cups a week. And when I say two to three cups, I'm talking not Starbucks. Okay, so there are many um, cafes in university and they charge about $3.20 um, per cup of say about a flat white or so. And that's actually pretty decent. That's it actually is even half the price of what you can get for a tall latte in um, Starbucks. So an alternative if you are out and about is to actually go to McDonald's. So McDonald's does really great um, coffee as well for the same price at about 320 or so. And you know if you just need that caffeine buzz, I think that's perfect. Well, alternatively, what I do is um, I have this really great um, coffee machine uh, and also I've got this mini mocha pot. So it depends on what coffee I have, um, but usually um, an entire sachet like this can last me for about two to three weeks. And um, I have it every morning. So whether or not I go to the cafe, I know that I've got some caffeine in me and that should usually um, get me started for the day. Now for the last and final point, allow yourself a small budget to spend on whatever you want. So for me, I budgeted about a hundred dollars, and this can include things like movies, or you know, buying that extra pair of jeans that you absolutely need. 
um, or you know even just treating yourself to a restaurant because really right you can't just eat like cheap food every day or home cooked food every day you might get sick um, so last month I spent on a sweater um, a pair of jeans well really cheap um, at discounts and um, this month I treated myself to a sushi meal so that's how I spent my $100 however if you want to buy bigger ticket items well of course then you can just accumulate that extra money that you've got aside um, and spend it at a later month so there you have it right being a student is really really hard um, you know sometimes you have to understand that this is just temporary but you're your back at school doesn't mean that you have to be a commercial aesthetic just make sure that you treat yourself um, once in a while you know for the little things that are really really important and you know most importantly you've earned it for working so hard to stay within budget so if you're wondering what today's artifact is about so this is a replica um, it's plaster cast of um, you see what it is it says a Garuda style Nikoku from the 10th century so a Garuda is hmm, something like a phoenix um, in the Hindu mythology and so um, I got this in Cambodia um, it was not at an antique store it was actually at the Cambodia um, National Museum if I'm not wrong and so they, they sell um, this sort of replicas because they want people to not steal from them um, making these sort of replicas allow you to bring them back home um, and they were not expensive and they also kind of tell you a story about the place so you always think that uh, Cambodia is a, a Buddhist place right um, yes but first before Buddhism came Hinduism came um, by India and by a trade as well so um, we have a lot of these sort of stuff um, and these features right, if you can see kind of looks like a person as well and these um, Indic features or or um, characters that come from the Mahabharata or um, the Ramayana, they will be repeated um, later on when we see things from Indonesia, like Bali, for example, or even in Thailand um, and Burma. Right. So, thanks for watching, everybody. And if you've not subscribed, just click on the link below. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.